Hi everyone, this is Shainti bringing you another episode of Shainti Finance. Today's art of tutorial is pretty obvious. I am going to demonstrate how I painted the lion and his cub. And this is going to be my tutorial, an oil pastel tutorial presented for Father's Day. So if you want to paint something for your Father's Day, you now have another option. I already shared a watercolor painting last week for Father's Day. And this is going to be an oil pastel tutorial for Father's Day itself. And to uh, make it even more interesting, this is this uh, particular painting and tutorial is going to serve a dual purpose. It is also going to be my addition to this my painting series for uh, the month of June. And the painting series that I'm referring to is the animation imagination series. I've painted Pocahontas. I started with Pocahontas and then I painted Elsa. Then I painted... Um, um, many more, um, Merida from Brave and many others uh, in the consecutive months for, you know, the animation reimagination series. And this is going to be my tribute to my all time favorite animation movie, Lion King. Yes, I am reimagining re uh, the relationship of Mufasa and Simba and Lion King and trying to portray that in this painting. Let's take a look at uh, what I'm using. I'm using pastel mat as my paper. I'm going to use the soft maize color and that I'm using my 40 piece Holbein oil pastel uh, set and I'm also using uh, some charcoal pencils here. I'm predominantly going to use the 2B charcoal pencil. I'm also keeping handy a uh, tortillon and a clay shaper tool for blending purposes. Uh, that is all there is and everything is linked in the video description below. So if you want the links to buy them or want to find out how pricey they are, there are links in the video description below. So go ahead and check them out if you need to. Obviously, if you buy them, I get a very tiny, tiny percentage of that uh, from your uh, purchase. So that is obviously very helpful to me. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm, I'm not big on selling or anything anyways. So what I'm trying to do with the charcoal pencil here is I'm trying to create an underdrawing. So the areas that are like really dark and almost black, I'm trying to define those areas and you know, the mid tones, shadows and all that. I'm kind of creating a roadmap in the in the black and white way. And since this uh, this particular paper is already the maize color, I do not have to use watercolors or anything to do an underpainting. However, pastel matte does take water medium as very well as well. So if you want have to or want to do some underpainting with some water based medium, you can do that on pastel mat. In this case, I'm just going to do a simple charcoal underdrawing. And that too, I'm not going to go into much details with charcoal. It's just like a, a kind of a sketchy way to kind of put in the darks and lights in the right area. You can even skip this step and go directly into oil pastel. It's totally your preference. But since the eyes and around the nose and those areas have very fine lines and very dark lines as well, I decided that doing that charcoal underdrawing would probably be a little bit helpful and uh, will help me in the longer run. So this painting, I started off trying to do it a very realistic look. However, halfway through the painting, I was kind of liking the choppy, kind of impressionistic look that it was taking and so at the very end I did not go for complete realism and kind of went somewhere in between realism and impressionism so that's that's what my take was for this painting however you can take it in either direction you can go all the way towards impressionism you can go all the way towards um, you know uh, realism that's totally up to you. The next thing that I'm going to do here is I am taking my white oil pastel and drawing out the absolute bright white highlights. This is something I generally do not do with oil pastels. I typically start with either mid tones or uh, the darkest tones. And the, there is not any particular reason why I did that. It's just I wanted to mark out the very bright highlights. And you will see that in the eventual, um, eventually in a 
just a few minutes i will cover up most of those whites uh, with uh, uh, other colors and mix them with other colors rather but i just thought that at this point just putting in the highlights in some of the areas would be useful and again would give me a guideline or a roadmap just like the charcoal underdrawing it was doing so it's the same thing it this is not a mandatory step once again just like the charcoal underdrawing you can skip it and go straight away to your midtones and darks the next thing that i'm going to do is take out my darker colors which are i'm going to be very dark brown it's kind of like a burnt umber color and really you don't have to have a very specific color if you have a different oil pastel set with a diff little bit different color that's totally fine some kind of a brown will work because you will see that i will use a lot of different shades of browns and maroons and oranges and yellows in this painting so it really does not matter next i'm moving on to grays and adding some gray tones in different areas now where i am adding what color is kind of defined by the reference photo that i'm using by the way if you're scared of the drawing i am also adding a link in the video description to the tracing outline of this uh, particular line drawing so you don't have to draw the line with your uh, with a pencil drawing just to be able to uh, paint this you can just use that tracing outline and trace it out on your piece of paper and just enjoy the uh, coloring part just like you would do in a coloring book so that's an option too anyways coming back to the painting now you can see that i'm uh, kind of gone into a different shade of brown like i said i'll be using various different shades of browns and yellows some purp little bit of purple here and there I have used some grays as well and where I'm using what color once again is guided by the reference photo that I'm using and there is not a one particular reference photo that I can uh, lead you to I kind of ma mix and match two three different um, photos to get the composition that I wanted that is why I cannot uh, share the reference photo with you but I have the tracing drawing if that helps um, once again in the shadow areas i'm adding some purples because in my opinion shadows are not necessarily always black they have brown tones they have purple tones they have blue tones and compared to blue tones i often like purple tones because they have a very they give a merit more um not so bright color at the same time not a very dulling color so yeah i kind of like purple for shadows uh, often as opposed to blue uh, but it also depends on the painting each painting has different lights shadows different color schemes so depending on that i choose my colors so here i skipped the blues and went with grays and browns and a little bit of purple here and there onto the eye area these eye areas are typically the hardest things to do, to do when you're working with oil pastels or rather the small detail areas so you have to take a little bit of time and patience and then i'm using this clay shaper tool once again linked in the video description below and uh, coming back and forth with different colors so that the different areas are defined and you know the eye kind of looks realistic like once again i started off uh, thinking that i'm going to go for ultimate realism for this uh, line drawing but i did not in the end i kind of went halfway in between realism and impressionism so that's my take on this one another thing i wanted to admit while doing this particular painting that i do not paint very many animals birds yes flowers yes but animals not so many and i'm kind of uh, scared to draw and paint fur and that is one of the reasons i do not do so many animals unless my composition asks for it however i did it and it was pretty easy so if i can do it i can paint and fur and i can draw fur and i can could achieve the end result that i did then you can do it too so that is why i'm going to say that this is going this is a very pretty easy tutorial as well because unless it would have been easy and in case of animals i wouldn't have done it um, it's not that i am scared of uh, doing hard work but 
animals are not my stronger areas and that's why i'm saying that this is an um, easy semi beginners or intermediate uh, tutorial now you can see that i'm after adding a little bit of lighter colors which i'm used uh, flesh tints and whites i'm coming back with the darker browns once again and now i'm creating a lot of lines yes thin lines thick lines in the darker areas and i'm creating a lot and lot of lines and i will do that in couple of different other shades of browns as well and all over the painting right now that's drawing or painting rather is looks ugly it looks like a child has scribbled all over it and it it made has made it dirty but give it a little bit of time this is just a part of the entire process i'm going to go over it with many more color layers and a lot of other textures and colors and blend some of it let some of the texture show through and the combination some texture and some blending will actually in the end render the result that we are going for kind of the semi-realistic um, look that we are going for now i'm coming back with the flesh tone once again and when i'm going over different areas with the flesh tone you will see that i am losing some of those scribbly lines that i have created earlier because that is my intent i do not want all of those lines to stay i want some texture but i do not want equal amount of texture in all areas that will not make it look good i want a more natural look and that's why i have to vary the textures and colors in different areas vary the darks and light hype up the contrast add some textures in some areas remove some texture in some from some of the areas and that will give the painting the look that i am going for and i kept the painting very simple i did not go for a very big background or anything i i made the lie on the main subject and just went for a very simple green background that you will see at the very end and that's very much about it to this painting keep it simple i you must have noticed that in my all my recent videos i am going for a very simplistic look it's not that i am going away from bigger compositions or i'm getting scared of harder paintings or anything i i will do that and time and again however i also feel that art is something that helps most people to relax so if it makes you gets you more stressed because you are trying to get some fine details or you're trying to make it look like something and it's not you're not achieving those results then for many of us art is not actually serving the purpose that we are looking for not relaxing you so not working so that is not something i want to happen to you i want your art experience to be enjoyable it should want you to make uh, want to make more art in this process and that's why i'm keeping it very simple now like i said i'm going for the background it's just a simple green background and i'm using two different shades of green one on top of the other to get a kind of semi blended look i'm not going into very much heavy blending into it just just pushing it back into the paper with my fingers itself uh, if you do not want to use your fingers which i generally don't uh, also recommend to use fingers you can use any kind of blending uh, tools that you rather use and i have a whole video on um, eight different ways to blend oil pastels you can check that out as well so that's about it to this tutorial just cleaning up a little bit of the edges blending some of the edges getting some of the uh, highlights and that's about it to the painting i hope you enjoy the father's day lion king painting let me know your thoughts in the comments i always appreciate that thank you